Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. As landlords, it's our mission to provide safe, affordable housing for lots of folks. But most investors focus more on the affordable than the safe. Today, we're going to talk about safety and security for real estate owners and professionals and how you can actually make safety a competitive edge. And we've got awesome guests today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get all you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2022 Goals Retreat, January 7th to 9th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend event has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, to preserve your spot. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the live in-person 2022 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms, and joining me, our co-host, financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. Every week, we talk real estate and investment, and this week, we're going to talk about a completely different angle that is critically important for real estate investors and anyone involved with property to understand, and that is your safety and security. Yeah, you know, if you really think about it, we talk all the time about what the world needs out of landlords, and that's safe, affordable housing. Well, everybody focuses on the affordable side, but there's a lot of affordable neighborhoods that you wouldn't want to live in. And of course, there's a big opportunity. If you can rehab a property in terms of its physical appearance, one of the other rehabs you can do is its safety. We've owned apartment buildings that were in rougher areas, and part of the amenities that we added were greater safety protocols. And tenants appreciate that, especially you know young families that maybe are struggling. And of course, we're in an environment right now where people are having to downsize or move to other areas uh, because of financial constraints. So there's a huge opportunity if you understand safety just as a landlord and providing that. And of course, then the other side of it is when you're out there looking for those deals, your own personal safety and the safety of your team as you're transitioning a property. That's another thing you need to be thinking about that a lot of real estate investors don't talk about, but it's the reality of the world we live in. So arguably a critically important show, so much so that we have four guests today as we talk about making safety a competitive edge on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Registration is now open for The Real Estate Guys 20th Annual Investor Summit. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning in 2022, the editor of the Gold Newsletter, Brian London, international real estate developer, Beth Clifford, the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin, Jim Rohn's 18-year business partner, Kyle Wilson, and the rebel capitalist, George Gammon. And joining us live and in person for his 10th Investor Summit, best-selling author and the Rich Dad Advisor for Real Estate, Ken McElroy. Plus, lots more to be announced. It all begins June 10th, 2022 in beautiful Belize. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to preserve your spot. Go to realestateguysradio.com, click Summit, and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys, George Gammon, Ken McElroy, and an all-star faculty on the 20th Annual Investor Summit on Sand. Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. 
perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Anthony Mercury from Hotel Impossible, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, now in our 25th year of broadcast. Thanks for tuning into the show today. It's a good one and a unique topic. We're talking about safety and security, things that seem obvious, but to real estate owners, we have kind of two sides, making sure our property and therefore our tenants uh, are safe and secure, uh, but also professionals, people that show property, contractors, real estate agents and brokers, those kinds of folks. So let's welcome to the Real Estate Guys program, a longtime listener and friend, Joey Billy. And hey, Joey. How you guys doing? We're doing well. It's good to see you. Uh, I remember after the Investor Summit a few years back, uh, you sent us this awesome book about safety and security and peace of mind, which we'll uh, get to. And uh, it's a quick read, but really uh, brought to attention a lot of things that you may not think about. Tell us about your background and how that uh, relates to our topic. So I was in the Marine Corps from 2000 to 2004. After that, I uh, joined uh, doing some private contracting with various government agencies uh, overseas in Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, and then in 2015, I got an opportunity to join Signal 88 Securities. That's a national franchise. Uh, so I've been doing that ever since growing. And our focus is uh, the multifamily apartment community, homeowners associations, uh, basically communities in general is what we focus uh, all our sales on. Excellent. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that listeners are going to be interested in is just how do we approach this topic? And you've uh, also uh, invited a friend of yours and a, a guest on the program. Let's say hi to uh, Tom Armento. Hey, Tom. Hey, guys. How are we doing? Great. Now, you also have kind of an interesting background for our topic. Uh, tell us uh, tell us about that, Tom. Uh, yes, sir. I was a member of the 75th Ranger Regiment Special Operations Light Infantry uh, as a as part of the active duty. Uh, I didn't go contract. I went to the National Guard where I was a infantry and combat tactics instructor. So, you know, how to keep yourself safe on mission and what to do was was part of that. I also um, have done business development and on-site security analysis, uh, primarily in the school sector before, uh, for years before coming to Signal 88, where I am now the director of marketing, uh, working to help uh, explain sort of what we do and how the right level of security we can provide for multifamily home and apartments in order to make sure that everyone is safe while also balancing, you know, the perception. You know, that's one of the tricky things about security is you don't want it to look too aggressive where you live, right? You want to have the appropriate level to keep people safe, but also you don't want your tenants or your residents to be uncomfortable because you have to acknowledge that there are some things you have to be prepared for. So, uh, that was a very attractive thing that attracted me to work for uh, Signal 88 in marketing. And I really enjoy working with uh, our owners like Joey to put out the message of how to keep yourself safe and how to uh, also, you know, assuage and calm fears. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you both were able to share your military background because that kind of is trained into your thinking. And, you know, part of the premise of security is you would love to be able to just rely on being able to call the police or fire department, but sometimes that's not the case. So owners of property need to be proactive. So let's talk about assessing your security situation. That's something you guys do. How does somebody start to figure out where the gaps might be? So we always like to start uh, at night, see what's going on at night. It's usually where your highest crime is gonna be. So we start by ass assessing uh, lights, um, or is your property well lit? Uh, we look for large bushes. Uh, we need to trim that down. Are they by entryways? Are they by breezeways? Uh, anything along those lines. The goal is to, first of all, make it simple. And then from there, progress it into the more complicated things of, all right, well, are we going to look at installing cameras somewhere? Uh, what else are we going to do from there? Uh, what can the, the owners, uh, the property managers themselves do while uh, walking around? Uh, if you're interested in firearms and you want to carry a firearm, check with your company beforehand, but learn to use a firearm if that's something you're capable of doing. Uh, carrying a flashlight, a simple flashlight can help you in case you walk into a unit that is dark, the power is out still for some reason, and it's just dark in there. So you turn the lights on, maybe you're showing a unit uh, and the area is dark, the light uh, bulb, a bulbs burnt out. Little things like that can help protect you while walking a property and doing an assessment of your property. 
Well, that's a gold nugget there just to visit the property at night. How many investors just buy a property? They go see it during the day. They do an inspection and that's the end of it. So just going at night is uh, is definitely illuminating. Tom, what do you have to add to that? You know, one, I totally agree with Joey. Simplicity is, is the most important thing when you're doing this because the more complicated you make something, um, the harder it is to work around. The other thing I would say is that if you have a private security company like Signal 88 or you're going to be reliant on law enforcement, understand what their average response time is. You know, talk to your local law enforcement, talk to your security company and make sure that you know how long it's going to take. You know, most of the, the complaints in, in, you know, multifamily are noise complaints or, you know, someone got drunk or, and can't get into their, their unit. So they're raising a ruckus or they, there might be kids, you know, smoking some marijuana or something like that. Relatively minor things that you're not going to call 911 over, right? But to know what the 911 response time is critically important and to know what your security company's plan of action is to handle those things it are some things I would add on to. The other thing is make sure that you have really clear access control. If you have electronic keys, make, you know, what does your backup look like if the power goes out? Like who controls your, your manual key access and things like that, where you start, you know, you need security for sort of the day-to-day, -day, but you also need it when something goes wrong and things are elevated. So having that plan of action to say, you know, key controls with person X, they're available at roughly time Y, you know, based off that, you know, this is, and you can start formulating a plan like that. Great stuff. You know, as real estate investors, we often hire third-party professionals, you know, managers and, and so forth. If I'm going to have a large apartment complex, well, I'm not going to manage it myself. I'm going to find a professional company, third-party manager to come in. And security is kind of like that, right? There's there's two parts. There's the part of assessing the safety of your property independent of whether or not you hire a security patrol person or a company to come in. Uh, and then there is what is it that a security company does? So maybe take us through that part. If I own a couple hundred units and we've had issues, we've had, you know, people peeping toms or people trying to break in or there's been problems in the parking lot. Uh, how do I approach this idea of bringing on a security company? The best way to go after something like that is you start calling around, you call the companies, uh, you basically interview everyone that comes in. For instance, if what I would do, say you're a 250 unit apartment community, uh, you have uh, covered parking, you have issued parking, and we've been having parking issues. Somebody is coming in, parking in my parking spot, and I don't like that. So how am I going to deal with that? We call, they can call us. Uh, at that point, we come in, either have a vehicle towed, write a ticket for them that management can actually put fines on. We can't find them. However, management can. That's one thing to deal with parking. You can also use parking management software. Uh, that helps a lot of limiting the time that a visitor can be on your property. You can actually charge them by the hour of their visitor parking pass. So if, if say they come on, they're there for three hours um, and they that's what they paid for. After that, they can get towed if they're still remaining and didn't repay, just like a regular parking garage or anything along those lines. Uh, you have the peeping Tom issues or something along those lines. Having a sporadic patrol come through, highly visible, never knowing what time they're going to be there, is going to be extremely effective in keeping that person away. All right, they're going to they're going to want to go somewhere where they know no one's being proactive in showing that they're there to protect the community. You know, I would I would say that. One, I agree with everything. Definitely interview companies. I mean, yes, we're we're from a security firm and that's how we make our money, but it's important that you feel comfortable with your security. That's its own form of security. If you trust the person that's taking care of these issues, it makes it a lot easier for you. And as I like to encourage owners, it's like, go out there and show them just how much better we think we are. Uh, the other thing that, you know, we have both dedicated patrol service model and we also have a mobile patrol model. So I think that to Joey's point, like if you have covered parking for a 250 unit uh, apartment complex, not only do you have to like check the parking lot that it's around there, but you also have to check the parking garage. So just having one or two dedicated officers doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? When you, when you look at that specific type of thing, the ability to have a, a brightly lit mobile patrol vehicle that is able to move and able to respond to get places effectively is going to be a much more effective model for you than having two people or three people or even four people around a building that big that they've got to run, run around in parking. At the same time, if you have a much smaller, you know, single building unit, you know, call it 50 units or less, 
you know, maybe it makes sense to have a sort of hybrid, you know, security officer at night. That's also sort of the, the concierge, right? You know, also depending on how expensive your property is, like if you're charging lower to mid market rate, it probably doesn't make sense to have that person dressed up in, in more of that concierge variety. But if, if people are paying upper end of the market for premium, you know, that's not only great security and great peace of mind for you, that's great value add and something that you as the property owner can highlight and say that you're doing for those people. So it's understanding sort of where you fit in the market, understanding the unique challenges of your property, and then being able to have that conversation as you assess your vendor. All good points. You do want the tenants to feel safe. And if there's someone there who's on patrol and it's sporadic, which is great. So you don't get developed the patterns that other people can figure out, but you don't want them to feel like, you know, there's three guys with machine guns at the front of the entrance. And yet when you think about the things that happen, a lot of it is alleviated just by having a presence. It's been shown many times that criminals look for the easy path, right? The place that isn't lit, mm -hmm. the place where there isn't security. So what are the, some of the things that you guys work on when you've got a situation where there is crime someone's called you in because they've had these particular incidents well the, i mean the first thing for me uh, both as a someone who's done security consulting and on-site things is i always have the 101 of personal security you mentioned a couple of those things robert but i used to ask all the time like you're you're walking through a dimly lit area and you think someone's following you what's the first thing you do you turn around you turn around and face what you think that potential issue be because now you've shown yourself to not be a soft target now there's an opportunity cost to that person if they are following you potentially to, to commit a crime or do you harm. Now you've got to think about it because you have demonstrated that you are aware and you can take that exact line of thinking to your security. Like crime is inevitable, unfortunately, in this world, whether it's at your property or the property down the street or anything like that. At some point, someone is going to do something untoward, even if it's just, you know, a frustrated resident who wants to get in their house and decide to break a window because... Well, why ever they decide, people decide to do weird things like that. The trick is, is to really focus on that assessment when you work with that initial people and understand, you know, and listen to those security professionals as they're explaining to you what the scope and the scale of the problem is. So if we do an assessment of your property and see that there are five burnt out light bulbs, just replacing those light bulbs is going to make things safer, is going to, to show a deterrence of we are paying attention to little things. We value your safety and we value the safety of our, of our residents. It's those little things. It's having, um, you know, one of the things here at, at Signal we, that we do that we're really committed to is having fully electronic reports that have photos. So we don't just tell you that we did something or log something in on paper. You can see it electronically married to GPS so you know that we were there. So you, we also know where we were. So if there keeps being a repeated problem and we start figuring out that even if we're on mobile patrol and they are varied, so you can't quite time it, but people have figured out, well, they might be, be here between time X and time Y, but they're definitely not here at time Z. Well, then we can change it up, right? Because we have that reporting, we have that robustness of, of information. And that's something that some people don't really think about when they think about the legacy of it. But as much as we don't want to admit it sometimes, some criminals are really smart. They really take the time to understand their target and they really take the time to understand what they think that they can get away with. And some of the, the best people in that regard are teenagers, right? Because they're trying to sneak out of the house. They're trying to, you know, and all that petty criminal stuff that you see in multifamily apartment, a lot of it is sort of that teenage angst, teenage wasteland thing. And having a reporting function like that or the ability to track your issues, you know, is super, super important because it allows you to get ahead of it. And it allows you to sort of cut those things off of the past and make adjustments to catch some of that activity. Tom, I'm glad you brought that up because technology is something that continues to evolve. It gets easier and easier. We can watch where our kids are based on their cell phones. We have cameras and things. When you guys are approaching, say, an apartment owner, how much of that do you discuss? You know, bringing in a camera system and then would your security patrols have access to that? How does how do I think about, you know, expenditure and, and what I want, what I'm trying to get for that? So we, we actually like to show them that you can have cameras, you can have a security officer, or you can have both, which is ideal. Yeah, Having both is always the best option because the cameras are going to tell you what happened after the fact. Very few people are actually physically watching those cameras all the time. Okay. So what we do is come in our vehicles. Uh, we have cameras inside our vehicles so we can see the officers inside and outside the windshields. Um, our technology is GPS tracked. So you said kids' phones are tracked. All our officers' phones are tracked as well for that same reason. We want to know where they are, when they're there, et cetera. Uh, we track um, the reports. When is that report written? Where is that report written? 
Uh, we want to be able to have full access uh, to what the officer is doing while they're there. So when the officer finishes a report, hits send, the owner will have access to that report immediately if they are looking for something specific. And one of the other things that we'll do is what we call token access, where we'll actually have scan codes right by your lockup, and we'll scan them every single time we confirm that the door is locked, which is another great way to use technology because it shows, you know, at the end of the day, you can choose to look at it in two ways. One, we're being big brother, which we are a little bit, um, and so that scares some people. But really, what we have found is that most property owners really appreciate the peace of mind because we can tell you and show you exactly what we did. And it's also, at least for me here at the, at the franchise group, I think it's a real benefit for our owners because if someone exp expresses displeasure, right? Because that's another thing that you've got to think about is like, if it's not working right, or if there's a series of vagrancies or break-ins or everything, and you have those reports, again, going back to that, you can have the conversation of saying, okay, this isn't working. This is what we want to try. So if you started at what you think, we always start at the lowest level of acceptable service, right? For something like this, like you're not going to go in and spend tens of thousands of dollars on intricate camera systems to guard your parking lots along with all the dedicated people on site, you know, you're going to, you're going to start with what you think is your minimally viable thing. Well, having accurate reporting, having an accurate understanding and having a company that can communicate what they're doing in real time gives you a real and honest assessment of is where you started actually viable, you know, or is it not enough? Or on the flip side of the coin is, and I know that our owners don't like it when I say this, but I think it's an important thing to be an honest broker about. Did we start off maybe a little too much? If we're really realizing that, you know, this, that we thought that the times were happening here, but we're really seeing that this is the core of it and you can shave off a mobile, mobile patrol a night, well, that's good partnership and you should be able to see that and you should be able to understand that and get a real, honest, ever-evolving assessment of what your security needs look like and what your provider is doing for you. And that's really the goal of our technology as much to help increase keep you safe, but keep you safe at the right appropriate level for your building, for your community, and ultimately for your budget. Because at the end of the day, that's always a consideration and we're very aware of that. Well, owners are going to look at it at first as an expense, but really it is ounce of prevention and pretty soon becomes a marketing tool. Because we have this security protocol, this is a safe place to stay people will probably pay a premium for that. Well, guys, we sure appreciate uh, your input on day. This has been enlightening stuff. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Signal 88 and what they do, all you have to do is send an email to safety at realestateguysradio.com and you'll get their contact information, safety at realestateguysradio.com. Joey, Tom, thanks for, so much for being on the show today. Thanks, gents. Thanks so much for having us. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More when we come back, I'm your host, Robert Helms real estate investment advice right in your mailbox sign up for the free real estate guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com hey it's robert helms thanks so much for listening to the show today I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow offshore diversification and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing Come join me December 3rd through 6th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 15 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful. The people are wonderful. And wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. Demand for offshore real estate has skyrocketed since the coronavirus shutdown, and with retirees looking for lifestyle, the work-from-home workforce able to be productive from afar, and tourism coming back strong, now may be the perfect time to consider Belize as a place to diversify risk in your investment portfolio. There's all types of opportunity in Belize when it comes to real estate investing, including both long-term and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me in December in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. 
Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. You've heard about Belize and the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trip. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as full travel details. So join me in Belize December 3rd to 6th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events and I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Have fun. You'll learn something. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Hey, if you want to have a bigger, brighter, more dynamic and exciting future, don't leave it to chance. Come to our 2022 Goals Retreat in Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, the first full weekend of the new year. It'll change your life. Get all the details at realestateguysradio.com under events. We're talking today about safety, a critical issue for real estate investors. And before we transition from your property safety to your personal safety, it's time to play real estate trivia, which will have something to do with our topic. As soon as you hear today's question and think you might know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. The first person that gets it right is going to get this awesome book called Success Habits of Super Achievers. Features awesome stories by people like Les Brown, Brian Tracy, Phil Collin of Def Leppard, Dennis Waitley, yours truly, and lots more that can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week it was Halloween Horror Stories, so we didn't have a trivia question, but the week before we were talking about shared housing and asked this, one of television's famous shared housing scenarios, Three's Company, aired for eight seasons on ABC from 1977 to 1984. Joyce, Chrissy, and Jack lived in an apartment building managed originally by Stanley and Helen Roper. In what real estate market was their apartment located? Well, lots of great guesses on this one, including the correct answer. It was in Santa Monica, California. Three's company was actually based on the British sitcom Man About the House, where the roommates lived in a flat in London, England. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. For the year 2020, which U.S. state was the safest? Yeah, of all the U.S. states, there's obviously the most dangerous state and the safest state. Well, which one was the safest? If you think you might know, I read it recently, or want to make a guess, just send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your physical mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you success habits of super achievers. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking about safety. It's important for owners of real estate. It's important for practitioners, uh, real estate agents, and even contractors, folks that visit properties. Not something we think a lot about, but it's critically important. Our next guest actually spends a bunch of time educating professionals about how to be safe. Let's say hello to Carl Carter. Hey, Carl. Hello. Hey, it's great to have you on the program. I know that you're impassioned about sharing uh, the ideas that can keep realtors safe. You're a realtor yourself, practicing realtor uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas, but your passion doesn't come from that. It comes from tragedy that struck your family. And tell us the story. Tell us what happened to your mom. Sure. Um, I first have to thank you for for the opportunity to, to share my heart and my passion and for you using your platform to help save lives. We just actually passed the anniversary, if you will, of, of my mom being kidnapped while showing a property. My beautiful mom was realtor Beverly Carter. She's also from the Little Rock, Arkansas area. She was, you know, doing the work that she loved. And she received a, you know, a buyer lead. The, their story was that they were a husband and wife that had relocated to our area for work and looking to uh, purchase a home as soon as possible. And really, you know, what spanned a from the initial conversation until that showing uh, was really um, almost two week process of them uh, working to deceive her. And they did that by, of course, um, giving fictitious names. 
They used an app that gave them a spoof number to hide their true phone number. They took those same fictitious names and created a email account and, you know, continued down this path with these, these stories and these interactions, communicating with her not only by phone, but by text, by email. All the while, my mom, sweet, beautiful mom, was, was working so hard to find them that, that perfect property. Whenever, you know, she ultimately, you know, arrived at that home to show it to them, she had no idea that the people that were on the other side of this transaction had never relocated from another state due to work. They were always just right across town. And, you know, although they had told her that they were cash buyers for, for the property, they didn't have the cash. Their whole plan with this kidnapping was to, to hold her for ransom because they perceived my mom to be incredibly wealthy. As they've, they've told the media and investigators, they perceived my mom to be so wealthy that they thought they would get enough ransom money to never have to work again. Wow. And, you know, I think that part of the reason why my mom's story resonates with so many people is that these bad people, this husband and wife, they made this or developed this perception, I should say, based upon real estate marketing and publicly available information that they were able to find out through Google searches by going to my mom's Facebook profile. And then surprisingly to me, they also knew to go to online county property records to search for my mom's name to not only determine where my mom lived, but also the property value of the home that she lived in. And, you know, back to the point of it resonating with so many people is, you know, she was targeted for reasons I think that apply to all of us. There can be within this industry this perception that we are all so wildly successful. Of course, you know, as my mom arrives that day to that showing, thinking that, you know, after over a decade in business and having the opportunity to serve hundreds of clients and undoubtedly show, you know, thousands of homes, no idea that these people had deceived her and everything was a lie. And, you know, not knowing that the husband of this couple was a seven-time felon that had done multiple stints in prison. And during that, that showing, she was caught off guard and the husband, the bad guy, had was able to position himself behind her and he surprised my, my sweet mom with, with a taser in her side. And they kidnapped her, they held her as their prisoner in their, their home, the bad guy's home. And ultimately, because of so many things that my mom had done right about letting people know, letting my dad know where she'd be showing property that day and, and documenting so many things, we were able to, to know exactly where to go look for her. And ultimately, you know, we were able to find her, although it was uh, sadly much too late. When this plan fell apart, these, these awful people made this, this huge leap to abandon their plan of kidnapping her at a showing to hold her for ransom, to just kidnapping her, taking what she had on her person of value and, and ending her life. It took several days for my mom to be found. And it was during that time that this, this incredible industry that we work in rallied, and, and I mean truly rallied all across the country to get the word out, to offer prayers. The people here locally were in fields and wooded areas searching for my mom, and uh, she was found. I, I'm always reminded of how, how our industry can come together in such a mighty way for, for the good. Of course, since losing mom, uh, I think just because of the attention that it got in the media, I've had a lot of agents that have reached out to me to share their stories of how they've been victimized or how their loved ones have been victimized. And I saw a true need in the industry. And so I started this nonprofit and get to talk to, to great guys like you to help raise awareness. Well, Carl, thanks for sharing that with us. It's a terrible story. And I remember when it happened, it was a jolt through the real estate industry. And it's not the only incident of this, as you know. And we just admire the fact that you've taken this terrible personal loss and turned it into something I think your mom would be super proud of. Today, you help educate realtors and other professionals about some of the common sense and maybe not so common sense things they can do to be safe. So with that background, share with us maybe some of the things that you've learned and how you counsel agents and others today about how to protect themselves better. Sure. So, you know, there are a lot of things that we can do. 
some smaller than others. And I always start when I, I think about safety with my mom's story. These people, they, they went after her and went through with this, this plan of kidnapping her because they thought they could get away with it. You know, it's an important thing, and I, and I hope that everyone knows that as I say these next words, that this in no way is victim blaming my mom. This is really about empowering all of us so that we can take preventive measures to, from keeping ourselves, from finding ourselves rather in, in similar situations. But as my mom arrived at that property that day to show, to show the house, to that point, there had only been just that communication over phone, text, and email. There had been no face-to-face pre-buyer consultation in a neutral location. There had been no exchange of identification. And there certainly had been no proof that the cash that they said they had to purchase that home was, you know, even there. And so right off the bat, we can do ourselves such a service and not just from safety, but to keep from wasting our time too by, you know, showing property to, to people that, that don't even have the means to, to purchase a home um, by verifying identity and doing it in a very consistent way. Um, we certainly don't want to find ourselves in you know, any discriminatory uh, situations or being uh, accused of it because we're only screening certain types of people, but then also really working through. We talk a lot about scripting and overcoming objections and refining the things that we say to be more compelling. And I am just as passionate on scripting related to asking for that, those proof of funds, overcoming the objections of, well, why do you want my identification? And letting our, our buyers, sellers, anyone that we're working with know that we're doing it as part of the value that we bring. It's not to, uh, to make anyone feel like they're a uh, you know, an axe murderer, because as you guys know, that uh, this industry that we, that we work in is largely safe. So all in all, I say, you know, start with a good process to do screening and a step further than just, here's what I'm doing to identify who this person is and who I'm working with. Two follow-ups I would say for that is to do just like those bad people did wherever possible to try to search out whether if it's a referral or if you're just going to look on the internet to, to find out not only who they are, but what else can you see about any possible intention? Or if, do they have any little weird quirks? Are they unhinged in some way? And then, you know, lastly, I think that it's important for us to really feel empowered. And, you know, when we think about my mom's story, undoubtedly there were times in this whole story that she felt uncomfortable. And so it sounds basic and we've been hearing it since we were kids, but I just, it is my hope that all of us will feel more empowered than we ever have to trust that voice, that instinct, that spidey sense, whatever you know it as to get out of the situation if you are made to feel uncomfortable. Excellent points. You know, I think you mentioned a couple of things that are very tactical, but make a ton of sense from not just the safety point of view, you you know, not wasting your time. You want to make sure your buyers are truly pre-qualified. That helps them not waste their time. That helps you not waste their time. In order to do that, you need your ID. So right there, that tells me a realtor ought to be working with a lender together in this regard. And then the idea of meeting in a neutral place. If you'll put as a real estate practitioner, the hoop of come into my office, we'll sit down, we'll talk about what you need so I can best serve your needs. Some people who probably aren't real buyers aren't going to do that. And if folks are willing to do that and come in and meet you face to face, the likelihood that you're going to have a problem goes down tremendously. So just some great practical tips there, Carl. Now, I I know another thing you talk about, and this actually did work in your favor, is having someone know where you are, maybe a buddy system. Talk about that kind of an element. Sure. So when, you know, my mom's situation, she had, you know, just literally, I mean, called my dad to tell him exactly what the rest of her day looked like and told him where she would be showing property. But, you know, for anyone that's listening that maybe is like me, that life is crazy, business is crazy, we're on the go constantly, I know for myself, I cannot be trusted to always remember to check in with someone. So I need technology to work for me. And so what I have done is enable technology, and this is really a two-parter. 
to start by enabling technology. You know, we have these phones that have these incredible capabilities that we can share our location at any time. If, you know, depending upon the, the email service that you use, you can uh, grant permission so that anyone can see your calendar at any time. I live by my calendar. And if I'm going to, you know, block time to show properties, I copy paste the MLS numbers for those properties in there. And I have permission set that people can see exactly where I'm going, who I'll be going with. And so I think that that's a good starting point for where am I, where have I been, and uh, what, what's going on while I'm in that, so that in case someone can't get in touch with me, they can see these breadcrumbs that I've left without me having to remember to, to do that. You know, I think that the second part of it, though, is it's worthless to have all of these permissions set for this information to be accessible to either trusted colleagues or your family members if you don't follow that up with a conversation and, quite frankly, a recurring conversation about, hey, I just want to let you know that, you know, you by doing this, 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 you can see where I am at any time. Or by clicking here, you can see my calendar. And just so you know, I keep it updated with everything that I'm working on. Those conversations don't have to be scary, right? It's just, it's a way to say, hey, I trust you. I love you. I know I want you to be able to get in touch with me at any time and know what's going on. And it's been such a, a kind of a sigh of relief for, for me in my business um, and then my colleagues that I share information with, if ever we can't get another person on the phone, we can quickly identify what's going on. Well, and you know, those are easy steps. They don't take a lot of effort, but they're also, as Jim Rohn would say, easy not to do. So just the discipline of those simple steps, making a part of your routine. We all uh, in this business run our life by the calendar. Uh, why not make sure that uh, folks can figure out where we are and, and the regular check-in points. You know, um, part of your mom's story, she, she called your dad right before he knew where she was going to be and therefore got a, a, a run on on the situation. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't end uh, how we would have liked. And we can say that those folks are behind bars and, and all of that, but it's too late. And let's not have it be too late for realtors that are hardworking and out there. And I think the other part of it is just situational awareness. You know, I, I've been around real estate agents for most of my life. My dad was an agent years before me and the agents, you know, they, they don't always think about that. They're expecting everything to be fine, normal, fun, friendly, and just having that situational awareness um, could save your life. I completely agree with you. And, you know, I, I can't help but wonder, it's total speculation on my part but, you know, this home where my mom was kidnapped, this was within the community in which she lived. This house was situated upon on the same lake that her house sat on, which is why I think it was so easy for my dad to know exactly where she had been showing property. Um, you know, just a few doors down was where the pastor of her church lived. And, you know, you just can't help but wonder for these, the places that we repeatedly go. And, you know, this is my neighborhood. This is where I live. If when we are in our comfortable place, do we see that situational awareness kind of wane a bit? And I know for myself, I do. And so I have to try to continually just challenge myself to say, okay, pay attention, dude. Just because you drive these roads every day doesn't mean that you don't need to pay attention to what's going on. Now, Carl, today, in addition to selling real estate in Little Rock, Arkansas, you educate agents about that. In fact, you're going to be speaking at the National Association of Realtors annual conference. It's coming up just a few weeks from now. Uh, tell us about the speaking that you do and about that part of your business life. Sure. So um, as I can, I uh, volunteer my time for the, the Beverly Carter Foundation, which is a nonprofit that seeks to inspire preventive changes in our industry so that we can keep everyone safe. And I'm um, really excited to partner with the National Association of Realtors and for the opportunity to speak. What I'll be speaking on then is, as, as I've been speaking for the past uh, few years on this topic, I've had the tremendous opportunity to learn a lot from other agents about what they do to keep safe, tips and tricks and software they love, technology of all sorts. So uh, I'm excited to, to partner with, with them to bring kind of the, the best of what I've learned since losing my precious mom. And um, also excited to, to showcase the great work that, that our association has done, uh, especially over the last 18 months. We've seen their portfolio of safety uh, resources just exponentially grow 
And it's, it's really exciting to be a part of that. As I can, I do volunteer my time and, and travel across the United States and Canada and to spread this message, to tell the story of my mom, which I think is a very teachable story and have had great opportunity to have very meaningful conversations with agents that, to your point, that good, hardworking people that are just trying to make you know a good living for themselves and just it's my precious mom has enabled them to, to hit the brakes a little bit just to think about some things that could put them in a, a dangerous situation. Well, I'm confident you're saving lives by the work you do. And you mentioned that there are some resources available that NAR has uh, stepped up to create. And also, if folks are interested in the Beverly Carter Foundation and the help that they can grant as you get this message out, uh, just send an email to safety at realestateguysradio.com. Safety at realestateguysradio.com. And we'll send you back the information on how to reach Carl about the foundation where you can certainly help and about the safety resources available from the National Association of Realtors. Carl, thanks so much for sharing your time and your story with us today. Thank you so much. There's Carl Carter. We're talking about safety and security for real estate owners and professionals. More on the way. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. If you're among the millions of people who've recently purchased a firearm, but you've never been professionally trained, this is your chance to get four full days of world-class professional training for free. Owning a gun is a personal choice and is a serious responsibility. We're firearms training advocates, and we believe the safest gun owners are those properly trained in the safe, responsible handling of their firearm. And if you own a gun for personal defense, a life or death situation is not the time to discover your skills under pressure or lacking. For a limited time, we're offering a four-day defensive handgun training course at the premier firearms training school in the country, a $2,000 value for free. You pay only for your ammo and a $50 background check fee. This course has helped thousands of students go from nervous beginner to skilled marksman on par with law enforcement and military in just four days. To claim your free firearms training course, simply send your email request to gunsafety at realestateguysradio.com. That's gunsafety at realestateguysradio.com. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, ever wished you could go back in time and do some tax planning? Now you can, just like Marty McFly. Lucky for you, a brand new federal law just made this possible with an EQRP to get tax deductions and reduce your taxable income from last year so you can use that tax savings to invest in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, even your own business. Whether you're a full-time investor, doctor, government employee, even if you have five or 50 employees, the EQRP works and is your secret weapon and now it's retroactive. Hey, I'm Damian Lupo and we have your solution. By the way, if you got bad advice and used an IRA for an apartment syndication, you are sitting on a U-bit time bomb. But don't worry, there's a solution, the EQRP. The EQRP company is ready to help you get control of your money, kill U-bit, and help you pay way less taxes. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report. Paying tax or letting Wall Street suck you dry is dumb. Your first step is freeing your retirement money by sending an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com today. Hey, this is John Asraf, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. We're talking about the importance of safety, making sure you are situationally aware, and if you're an owner of property or if you're a person that goes out and visits property, you just got to be a little more aware of your surroundings. And let's introduce our final guest today. He's a good friend and real estate investor. Let's say hi to Jay Johnson. Hey, Jay. How are you, Robert? I'm great. Appreciate you being on today. In addition to being a real estate investor, syndicator, general contractor, you do a lot in real estate. You also have an amazing background in the military and police. You uh, actually part of a SWAT team. Uh, tell us about that part of your life. Yeah, I did four years in the military. I wasn't a direct action combat troop there. I essentially worked on weapons systems in the Air Force, but when I got out, I got into business and I ultimately went and went to work in law enforcement. I've been doing that about 15 and a half years uh, of that time, worked in a number of capacities from patrol operations to general detective. Currently, one of the assistant team leaders on a SWAT team, one of the sniper observers on that. And I, I do a lot of training for our entire department on surviving lethal encounters and basic tactics. 
Well, and I know you train people in this regard, and uh, most folks listening aren't going to need quite that level of expertise, but what are some things that people can be thinking about and maybe some skills that they need to have as they're just approaching this whole issue of their personal safety? Well, you, you kind of hit on the situational awareness piece, and that, that truly is key. Uh, we train people that you need to see what you're looking at. A lot of people spend a lot of time looking, but they're not really seeing Oftentimes, the clues of a problem are present. We just don't see them or register what they actually are. Uh, so that's the first thing we try to do. And then we try to teach people the concept of what we call when-then thinking. So when this happens, my response will be X, whatever that is. And what that does is allows your mind to at least briefly visit a space that's unlikely to have to go to in the real world, but you have at least a basic preconceived plan of something you can do when X happens. So it used to be called years ago, if, if, when thinking, but kind of subconsciously that, that builds into you the, the natural desire to dismiss the possibility. So that's uh, industry-wide that's kind of changed to when then thinking over the years and really pushing people to, to understand that concept. Because we always say the the body can't go where the mind hasn't been. That's a pretty good basis to start, I think, for folks is, Ask yourself, what could happen to me here? When this happens, what will my response be? And then update that model. If you're walking through a house with somebody or a property or whatever, your environment's changing constantly. Every time you go to a new room, every time you have a new or a change to your entry or exit points, the number of people around or not around, that environment's constantly changing. So you have to update that model. It sounds cumbersome, but it's really not. Once you get a little practice at it, it happens in seconds without even really thinking about it. Well, you know, it's kind of a, a way of visualizing, which is a great tool anyway. If you're going to be in a situation like you're presenting or you're performing, visualizing what it's going to be like with the audience and the stage and just all that stuff. And here it's the same thing. If I'm showing property, I ought to think through what might happen, what could happen. If I'm a property manager and I'm spending time on, you know, several properties and they're all different. So that's that's great advice. Now, let's talk about the next level of safety, and that is there are people that are going to spend more time in these situations, just the nature of their job. If I'm a C-class property manager, I'm just going to come across maybe some elements that I'm not uh, too happy about. Uh, how do you decide what and if you should carry any kind of equipment with you, and what might that be? Well, that's a great question. I get that question a lot, and, and the reality is a lot of folks, they want a one-size-fits-all solution, and that doesn't happen. That's why when I'm working in a law enforcement capacity, I carry a number of tools. Uh, that's why when we go on a SWAT operation, we have a vehicle full of tools. And what you got to understand is don't become over-reliant on any one thing, because it really, you're kind of the, you as a person is kind of the motherboard of the whole thing, if you think in sense of a computer. Your mind and what's going on inside of you is what's most important. All the tools you carry are supplemental. They're supplementing your ability. So again, focus on the mental component. Get your mind wrapped around it. There's a number of ways you can do that. But then when you decide on a tool, you're going to want to decide on a tool that you truly feel comfortable with and, and understand the assets and liabilities of each one of those tools. For example, pepper spray has been around a long time. I've been pepper sprayed. It's a horrible experience for me. But I was also in a class of probably 35 people and it hardly affected some people at all. I've personally pepper sprayed some people, had almost no effect, just made them angry. Wow. So you need to be prepared for that. Tools fail. Tasers. You know, tasers are a great invention for a less lethal option nowadays, but you got to understand they fail as well. I've had them fail when I've used them. Uh, I've seen them fail in other instances, and I've seen them be very successful. But you got to understand that when it fails, if you don't have a plan B, when then thinking, when this fails, I'm going to do X, you're really setting yourself up for a problem. And then you can get all the way to the, to the point of people that choose to carry firearms, you know, for, for lethal defense. Well, you're no more a musician because you own a guitar than you are a gunfighter because you own a firearm. And it's kind of one of my favorite quotes. People think that you could just go buy this thing and, and you're instantly going to be great. It really takes a lot of training and preparation. And when I say a lot, I guess maybe that's misleading. You can get a lot done with somebody that knows how to train in just a few days. But really understanding how to operate that tool, its abilities, inabilities, 
that that's critical as well because they don't have it's not like hollywood you don't just shoot someone and they fall down and everything's fine uh, there's a whole bunch of components around that and i think oftentimes that gets overlooked so i guess my advice would be really understand the tool you're using prepare and train with it understand the failure points of it and have backup options through your when then thought process of what to do in the event of those failures all right, great stuff. Hey, you've seen all kinds of situations play out and the repercussions of that. Any final tips that you have for folks that maybe haven't been paying too much attention to their uh, physical safety, but now they're out in the world, they're a little more aware thanks to today's show. Any uh, any parting ideas? Yeah, a couple, a couple of my favorite quotes. One is by Marcus Luttrell, and he says, a fear is a force that sharpens our senses. Being afraid is a state of paralysis in which you can't do anything. Knowing the difference is critical. And what, what puts us into the, the field of being afraid is a lack of preparation, essentially a form of denial. Though these, these events are mathematically unlikely to happen to you, the stakes are so high that when they do, we often mentally shut down. And there's a whole reason behind that um, relative to psychological and physiological effects of fear and due stress. Um, there, there's a whole mental component that happens there. So I would encourage people just to open your mind, really do the when then thinking, consider what they are going to do, what they're willing to do, what they're not willing to do, just like you guys always talk about. And understand that when the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has passed. Love that. All right. Well, we sure appreciate your time and wisdom today. Thanks, Jay. Hey, you bet. Thanks, Robert. There's Jay Johnson. Oh my goodness. What great stuff from Jay and Joey and Tom and Carl Carter. I feel safer already. Yeah. Well, it starts with having the right mindset, being aware that there's dangers out there you need to be prepared for and kind of visualizing what that looks like both personally and in terms of your property portfolio and team. Then it's getting informed, getting the right people around you who can help you, getting the right training if that's what's appropriate, uh, getting the right systems in place, and then just being diligent to stay alert and stay on top of it and notice that the world is changing. You know, we had a property one time where the entire demographic changed because of a political change in the environment, and uh, the property suddenly became a whole lot less safe because of the tenant mix that ended up coming in. Uh, we had to deal with that, and we learned a lot about the importance of safety. So hopefully everybody got a lot out of this uh, episode and is going to tap into these great resources that we now have available. In fact, uh, the easy way to get a hold of those resources is just send an email to safety at realestateguysradio.com. Safety at realestateguysradio.com. Big thanks to Joey, Tom, Carl, and Jay for their expertise and ideas today. Stay safe out there. Next week, we're going to shift gears and talk about equity management strategies to unlock the power of your balance sheet. Until then... Go out and safely make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.